Welcome to my Love Cultures and Blogs. I'm John Kinston and this is episode 23. It's now 15 weeks to go on Saturday to the Northern Tavis. I'm recording this on Sunday the 21st of January 2018 and so next Saturday will be 15 weeks before the race so things are starting to I suppose um, build up now I've had three weeks of training and now I feel as though I'm into the sort of uh, the meat of it in a sense I've had a, an introduction I've had a good start I'm gonna start picking things up now and uh, as I'll explain in a moment but before I just talk about uh, my training this week I just wanted to say congratulations to all those who were involved in the spine race last weekend I mentioned um, uh, Vicky our friend had finished the challenger race and she did really really well um, and then all through the week I was following the race like many many people first thing I did when I got up in the morning was to check the website to see how my friends were doing uh, and then throughout the day when I got a chance I'd have a look and then certainly in the evening I'd be checking it two or three times and last thing I, before I went to bed and uh, the people I suppose I was following closest were um, Kirsty Williams who's a friend from the West Harlem Way I've been in a number of races with Kirsty and um, it was great just to watch her progress and then my friends Andy and Sarah and Kirsty had a really solid race she was um, going well early on and seemed to be sort of moving up there she was in second third female for most of the time and from about Tuesday Wednesday onwards she seemed to be about 24 hours ahead of Andy and Sarah so it was quite interesting to see when she went through a checkpoint and then a day later Andy and Sarah would tend to go through and that had significance near the end um, on Thursday night was it I think the race was stopped for about uh, nine hours because the weather was just so bad and I know that was going to put Andy and Sarah right on the limit because when I spoke to them before the race they knew that they wanted to finish in the daylight on Saturday which would give them sort of about 10 hours before the, the cut off on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock um, but with that enforced rest and the time's not added on you have to uh, make it up in a sense so I knew it was going to be tight for them but anyway, um, Vicky finished second female in a time of 151 hours and 00, 0 and 5 seconds, which is 6 days, 7 hours, no minutes and 5 seconds. And uh, a couple of things I saw on there was a couple of comments about her being one of the happiest runners out there. So well done to Kirsty, that was a tremendous performance. And then very much I was thinking about Andy and Sarah and I was wondering whether they could finish on time because Vicky didn't finish and uh, Kirsty sorry didn't finish until mid-afternoon and yesterday so I was thinking well if Andy and Sarah are t 24 hours behind then they're not going to finish till mid mid-afternoon on Sunday which would be too late and um, but I realized that um, uh, Kirsty did have a sleep somewhere I assume because one of the one of the, the legs were quite a lot slower so she must have stopped for a while and I assume that Andy and Sarah were just going to push on which is what I think they did and so when when I went when I looked yesterday they had about 18 miles to go and they had about um, eight hours plus another six about 14 hours to do it so it, uh, you'd think that should be reason should be reasonable but the conditions were so bad that even moving at one mile an hour some of the time must have been really really tough when I went to bed they had 14 miles to go and but they were still moving so I thought well hopefully they'll do well and I got up pretty early this morning to drop our daughter into um, into, into Glasgow um, and I checked the website and I was so so pleased to see that they'd finished and they finished in six days 19 hours 46 minutes and 54 seconds so they were four hours 13 minutes and six seconds inside the cutoff which when you think seven days and they're only four hours inside shows how close it was for them so well done and uh, I'm really looking forward to finding out more about how they got on and what it was like but uh, congratulations to those three and everybody else who not only finished the race but towed the line and got as far as they could it just looks any any year it's tough but the the weather this year looked absolutely horrendous so I suppose that puts my <laughs> my training in perspective and um, but uh, this blogs about my preparation for the Northern Traverse so just let you know what I did and um, this week I ran 37.03 miles and I also cycled 11.03 
uh, around on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then Saturday, Sunday, and I cycled on Tuesday. I was going to cycle Friday to work and back, but the the, uh, snow, the the roads were pretty icy, so I didn't think that was a sensible idea. Uh, my runs, Monday and Wednesday, I did my loops around uh, off-road runs around Pollock. Um, the Wednesday it was really snowy it was great running through the snow and I really enjoyed that so that was uh, that was great fun and um, both solid runs quite happy with uh, with those and um, Thursday I did a lunchtime road run it was a bit icy on the pavement but I, I got away with it really didn't slip too much um, but the thing that really encouraged me is I, ran, I wasn't aiming to run at a particular pace I just I just uh, went as I felt and I was quite chuffed to see that I'd run at 827 pace, which uh, nothing special, but it's um, pretty good for me in the sense of the way just coming back from an injury. And the encouraging thing was I, I, I didn't work any harder. So that was the first run really I think I've done where I've just gone out and run easy. And it's been, a, a, not fast, but a, a, for me, just a little bit quicker. And um, so that was in, uh, encouraging. And then yesterday, uh, Katrina and myself, our plan was to do an 18-mile loop on the Kilpatricks, uh, building up each week. We've ran a little bit further each time, and then we've got a big one next weekend, so we thought we'd do 18 this weekend. And um, We set off uh, around about 11 o'clock, just after 11, and um, we headed up the hill, and straight away we were into the snow. In fact, the snow was, um, was down in the car park. And it was quite thick, but I was thinking, well, maybe when we get to the, on the tops, it'll be a bit more compact, but it wasn't. The first two miles took us almost an hour, and we were wading through this thick, thick snow. I'll, uh, I'll put some photos and videos on as I, as I speak, and so you can see them just ha how thick the snow was. And so we realized to do, we were only going at two miles an hour, so to do the 18 mile loop would take us at least nine hours. We didn't have a head torch with us. Um, so that was not really an option. We had a Kaylee to go to in the evening. So we decided to be safe and to get down. So we headed down, we did another loop. Uh, so we ended up doing seven and a bit miles. And we still was just over two hours. Um, but we, we loved it and it was beautiful, beautiful blue sky. If we'd gone out for a walk, it would have been incredible. But um, we turned to run, it was quite difficult. Having said that, two guys did run past us uh, through this thick snow, so they were uh, stronger than we were. So we decided this, to make up the miles really, we hoped to do 18 miles, we only did seven. So we decided that we would go and do another run today. So we headed over to Mulgai and we did the, the Mulgai trail race route, which is about seven and a bit. And then we did an out and back on the West Harlem Way. So we ended up just doing just over 11. Um, and we both just really enjoyed it. And it was thick snow everywhere, but it was on the footpaths, it was more compact, so you could still run. And um, Katrina's got a new jacket and she was hoping, oh, I'd like to test it out in the snow. And about two miles into the run, it started snowing and just snowed the whole way round. And it was just beautiful. It wasn't cold, um, but the snow was coming down quite thick and quite heavy. And uh, once we finished, we went into Costa and had some a toasty and, uh, and a, a drink. And then we headed home and normally it takes about half an hour to drive home from Mulgai but it took us about an hour and 20 minutes the roads were just so slippy a couple of places where cars couldn't get up the hill and we had to do an alternative route and um, so anyway we got home safely so that was a, a really good week I'm um, really pleased with these first three weeks of my training and uh, my ankle is coping really well uh, can still just about feel it I get the insoles a week week tomorrow so I've got another week to go before I get them um, but I'm just quite happy with the way things are going uh, the runs I've done I plan to do and so quite encouraged by uh, by all that um, just to, uh, one of the things that oh yeah, I was going to mention, I did try out today because I realised that when I do the recce run particularly and probably the race, I do ca I need to carry a little bit more gear. So I, w I had a, an, an Innovate bag from a long time ago, really light, just the bag itself. There's no, um, um, there's called a pocket on the waistband, but there's no place for water. But it's quite a good little, very light bag, it's quite roomy, so I can put a dry bag in and put some more gear in. So I tried that out over the last two days. Um, but what I did, uh, what I wore with it was a waistband I've got, a Nathan waistband, which has got two places for water and three little pockets. And those two things together worked really, really well. So I'm going to probably persevere with that next week and then try that on my, on my long runs. Um, I did have a, a comment on, these, uh, on YouTube from Joe Holden, Holdsworth. 
who's also doing the, the race and uh, so glad you're enjoying these uh, Joe hope your training's going well and he asked me are my planning to use poles and the answer is yes I'm going to take poles and probably use them well I will use them um, but I will do a, a separate episode about kit because I thought that's uh, on a big aspect and I was going to share some of the thing, the kit that I'm, I'm going to take with me for the race so I'll leave that for another episode for this week's episode I wanted just to highlight the entry and um, one of the things I like doing when I take part in a race is to see who else is doing it I've got a few friends and also just to see whether people have done it before and what sort of time they've done and etc so this next little clip is just me talking through a little spreadsheet that I've set up which has the results from 2016 to see those who are doing it again and those who are new so the next little few minutes is just me chatting on the computer and showing you the spreadsheet that I've set up with the entries for 2018. One of the things I quite like to do when um, I enter a race is just to see who else is running and um, one of the fun things for me I think is to um, to recognize that <clears throat> when you're running these races then you are running with lots of friends and uh, getting to know new people and so I always find it quite interesting to have a look at the website so at the moment there are 55 people who have entered and uh, I've got their names here and uh, I recognize a few people Kevin Borwell is uh, someone who I know from the Hardmores who's done the um, I remember the time I did the 110 he attempted the 160 so I've met him a couple of times um, and then uh, one or two others I can see uh, uh, Ian Keith he's just um, been doing the spine race which is going on right now and sadly he had to stop out he had to drop out with injury but he is a, a past winner of that and of, of this race there's me John Kiniston and Karen Nash is a good friend again I know her from the, uh, the hard moors and also we ran the Welsh uh, 10 peaks together a couple of years ago and then uh, ran together for, for a bit of time and so I know, know uh, Karen and um, Jen Scottney um, I know uh, Mark as a husband probably a bit better but it um, be nice to meet Jen and again she's just been involved in the spine race she did the challenger which is the 108 miles and uh, if you've been on social media with Jen you'll see her feet at the end and they were just absolutely horrendous but she promises and says that they are getting uh, better <coughs> but I'm sure she'll be recovered in time and ready to go on, on the race um, another name that I know well is John John Steele and um, John is the director with his wife of the Hardmore series and uh, John and Shirley are very good friends so look forward to running with them um, with John on the on the list so there's uh, 55 if you sort them by um, male and female so there's nine females and that means there's 46 males now there might be one or two more people entering because um, I think up until the first of February to slightly cheaper rate and um, I entered when it was the, the cheapest and then it, from when I entered it was October time and uh, not before that maybe and um, up until February it's one price and then the price does go up from February onwards so it might be that in the next day or two before the end of January there might be a few more people the other thing I like to do is just to see who's done the race before. Now it's only been run once before, so I've got here the results from 2016. Um, so Ian Keith won it in 51 hours, 58 minutes and 15 seconds. So that's two days and three hours and a bit. So that's pretty good going, isn't it? Uh, just over two days to cover 190 miles. Um, and then again, one or two names that I recognize here. Probably this is the one I know best, Andy Cole. <laughs> and um, I, I did see Andy's time and it's uh, 81 hours, 28 minutes, 11, which that means three days and nine hours, 28 minutes and 11. And when I talked to Andy about the race, he said, John, he said, you should be faster than me. And I think you should be aiming for three, hour, three days, 72 hours. So I must admit, that is my sort of round figure at the moment. Um, which on that race would have put me 11th but obviously it's I've got no idea but um, that it's a nice round figure so um, at the moment I'm thinking about um, three days as being my my goal 72 hours once I've done the recce and I've got an idea then obviously I'll have a bit more of an idea and then what I've done then is to link those with um, the, those who've done the race before or have not finished 
So if I sort by uh, finishing time, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen people who have uh, done the race before. And of those 13, 10 finished and are coming back for a second run. And then three people, Ben, Harry and Jess, uh, Jess, who um, didn't finish. Two got to Kirby Stephen and one got to Danby Whisk. So you can you can just sense their motivation, isn't it, is to finish, is to come back. Um, so that's 13 people who have done the race before, 10 who have finished. And I would imagine if I was them, I'd be looking to see if I can go faster, if I could learn the lessons from last time and uh, aim to go a little bit quicker. Which means that there's, what, 13, take away 46. So that means there's uh, 33 of us. No, 55, take away 30, take away 13. So that's two, so that's 42 people who have not done the race before. Um, so all these people from here onwards, including Karen and Jen and myself and John Steele and everybody else, we've not done the race. So I would imagine most of us, our first goal is to finish, is to complete it. And then other people may be looking to do better than that. But um, certainly I would imagine that the majority of us, our first goal is to make sure we finish at St. B's. Uh, no, Robin Hood's Bay even, and make sure we complete and join these guys and uh, these people from 2016 who have got a, a finish under their belt. So that's my little scroll through the entry and to think about who else is running and I'm looking forward to getting to know some of these people um, on the route. Well, I hope you found that helpful and uh, if your name's on that list then great and I look forward to running with you in May. Um, there could be others that will join it probably um, the closing date is not for a few more weeks the price goes up on the 1st of Feb so if you're watching this and you're thinking about doing the race then I would encourage you to get your entry in because it's about £100 cheaper or it'll be £100 more expensive after the end of January so if you want to take part I'd get your entry in and save yourself some money. Um, my plans for this week for, for running, I'm going to do very similar. I'm quite enjoying uh, going on, on, on Pollock Park at lunchtime, so on Monday and Wednesday. So I think work-wise I should be able to do that again. Um, and then Thursday I'll do another little sort of easy road run. But next Saturday we're going to join the West Harlem Way. And over the last number of years, we've done a training weekend at Balmahar. And we've stayed at the Oak Tree and we get a good race there as a, as a race. Um, but we're not going to stay this time, um, partly because um, we're still not quite sure what's happening to, to Laura with her, her baby. Still not come yet. The due date was Friday and it's now Sunday, so she's two days over. So it could well be next weekend. So we'll have to, uh, this might be a bit fluid. So we didn't want to book in um, to stay. So, but we're going to, hopefully, we'll go over for the Saturday. The run starts at 10 and it's 30 miles from Balmahar to Inversnade and back. Um, I'd like to do the full 30 miles, it'll be really good in our build up for Katrina as well for the, North, for the um, Hardmores 55 in March. So we plan to do this 30 and then a month time we'll do a 40 and then the race uh, the 55 so it's part of our build up. But I'm going to just see how my ankle feels, I, I, I don't see any reason why I can't do it at the moment but I don't want to say I'm going to and then decide not to because uh, I feel I'm committed to doing it and, um, and it could be sore. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of leeway in a sense and we'll see how that um, how that goes but I'm hoping um, to be able to do the, the full 30 miles so that will give me probably uh, definitely give me my biggest week by far this uh, for this year and uh, it's been a nice build up for that and then I'll be back next weekend and we'll do the next episode in this countdown to the Northern Traverse.